you should warm up always, every session, on a tonal glide, because it's so quick. And people can do this. They can do it. Watch me do it once, and watch exactly how I do it. I do it on the video, too, of course, a number of times. The tonal glide. E Take a breath. Yesterday, 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 what I said, yesterday, yesterday, day, day, what I said, sometimes I forgot, yesterday, yesterday, huh. because they don't feel the sound, e at the end of, war, of the world. Good, and your Y buzz is very good. That's a, I can tell you've got an excellent Y buzz, just from listening to that. Tomorrow, I will teach for 100 students. And at the beginning, I will, uh, for start, I will warm me up their voice by E, E, A, E, A. And I shoot that video for you with 100 students at the college. Ah, uh, good. Well, this is not a very optimal uh, audio-visual experience I'm having here because the room is just washed with all this sunlight and that's washing out the projection screen. Uh, you've got to convince the school that part of setting up an audio-visual room is including shades or blinds or drapes at least over the first two or three sets of windows because the sunlight will just um, make it hard for everyone to see the screen. Uh, if nothing else, get some cardboard and tape and apply it any way you can over those first few sets of windows. You can get the kids to do that. I've done that in a lot of the hotel rooms I've had, just to try and get it dark in there. So the purpose of this tonal glide, or we also call it a Y-buzz siren, is to increase the tonal vibration that you're feeling, which feeds into all the tonality in your speech and the consonants as well, not just the vowels. And this glide up and down is actually expanding your pitch range, and that also makes you more sensitive to feeling the sound, makes it stronger, and it's important for getting more intonation and more variety into your speech. Thank <laughs> you. 
I keep mentioning the lip position for this Y buzz sound because that little forward pout, and you could think of a pout as being like getting ready to kiss something, that little forward pout actually helps focus the sound waves right onto the gum ridge. Feeling good, strong, flexible tone on your E, A, and Y vowels is probably the single most important change you could make to your speech, especially for accent modification. You've got the long E, as in easy, the long A, as in stay, which is mostly the E sound, the Y initial, as in yes, the Y final, as in happy, also the diphthongs, oi, again mostly the E sound, as in boy, and I, as in by.
some things too, you know, with the E and the A sounds in it. To really think of those as your tonal anchors. You know, like an anchor holds down a ship, an anchor. I, I call them tonal anchors. That'd be e, cool. e, A, and Y are anchors that hold all of your speech down in that, in that tone. They hold the tone down there where you can feel it. It's a very important feature, like, uh, because that is a, a tonal anchor, like an anchor we, we anchor for the ship. Yeah, be, before I am a sailor, I, I, you know, the, the anchor is very important for the ship. It's a, the, the tonal anchor is a very important for the south. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, this is something I, I, I was concerned about, that you might be doing too much, is sticking with one subject without changing it enough. Doing some tonal, some consonant, some structural, one of each of the three energies. You should do it, try and do it almost in every lesson. You know, so they keep getting exposed to all three energies. Even if you only do one consonant, mm. or just doing you know, an N and a B, you know, something's got a different feeling to it. One or two consonants should be thrown in uh, any kind of structural or tonal lesson, because the three energies form a synergy, right? They form a synergy. So as much as you can employ all three energies in one session, that synergy will begin to happen.